All right, here are four minimalism tips from four minimalism books. These insights have really helped me on my journey as a minimalist. What I like about reading books is that it slows me down. Reading a book just takes the time it takes. Germans call this Eigenzeit. So I read four books about minimalism. Some were really great, others were a bit average, but they all had at least a few good takeaways. So here are my four lessons from those books. Our memories are within us, not within our things. This first tip comes from the book Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life by The Minimalist, Joshua Fields Melbourne and Ryan Nicodemus. You may know them from Matthew Vella's Minimalism documentary on Netflix. In the book, Joshua talks about how his mom passed away and she had a lot of stuff. She was a true hoarder. He wanted to just put all her stuff in storage, but then he looked under her bed and he found these sealed boxes. And these boxes contained all these papers from his first four years at school. And then he realized keeping his mom's stuff was futile. She didn't need to hold on to those papers to keep her memories of him. I mean, she never really opened those boxes, right? They were sealed. And similarly, he didn't need to hold on to her possessions to keep his memories of her. So in the end, he donated all her stuff. So the takeaway for me is that our memories are within us, not within our things. We are not our stuff and we are more than our possessions. We don't need to hold on to our things to cherish the memories connected to them. Some of these things can even weigh on us mentally and emotionally and letting go of them can be incredibly freeing. One in, one out. So this is a well-known minimalist practice. I first learned about the one out, one in rule when I read Goodbye Things by Japanese minimalist Fumio Sasaki. And this is really the golden rule of minimizing. Basically what it means is that when you buy an item, you first have to discard something else and not just anything else, but it has to be a similar item. So when you want to buy a new jacket, you first have to let go of a jacket you already own. And when you're still in the process of minimizing, you can adapt this rule to get rid of two to three things each time you want to buy something new. And another thing you can do is to have a predetermined number of clothes hangers in your closet so that you can buy more clothes than you have hangers for. Want what you already have. So this tip comes from the book Minimalist Living by Aston Sanderson. We are prone to something called hedonistic adaptation. This is the tendency to quickly return to a base level of happiness, no matter what happens to you or what change you make around you. And the result is that the grass always seems greener on the other side. Perfection seems to be all around us, especially on social media. When we look at a beauty product or the latest iPhone or gadget, we envision ourselves living in the fantasy world created by advertising. But minimalism is about living with intention, not buying on impulse. Aston suggests to first figure out why you want to buy something new. Do you really need it or do you just want it? If you don't get to the root of it, no amount of decluttering your home will prevent you from filling it back up. And then the next step is to be more appreciative of the things you already own. He suggests doing something called negative visualization, which is a technique from Stoicism. You close your eyes and picture yourself losing the things you have and what your life would be like without them. For example, losing your raincoat. Imagine walking in the rain, but now without the raincoat. Or imagine losing the subscribe button, then you couldn't subscribe to this channel anymore. By being mindful like this, cultivating gratitude, it's easier to want what you already have. The six month box challenge. So this tip comes from the book Minimalism, 50 tips and tricks by Robert Norman. I picked it up on Amazon, it's not very good, but it had a few interesting ideas in it. And one of them is the six month box challenge. So the idea is that when you're decluttering your stuff, there are a number of items that are in the gray zone and you don't know, should I keep it or should I discard of them? So when you're in limbo like that, he suggests grabbing a box, putting those items in there, dating the box, sealing it and storing it away. Don't touch it for six months. And then if after six months you take the box out and you haven't felt the need to get any of these items in the box, you can safely discard them. I suggested this method in my video, how to declutter sentimental items. When you're grieving, it's probably not the best time to make emotionally challenging decisions. But depending on what you're going through, it can be tempting to just get rid of everything altogether. Yet that might be something you regret later on. So what you could do instead is put those things in a box and store them away 
And then when the worst grief has faded, take that box out and revisit the, the items in there. See if you really want to discard them or maybe keep some of the items in the box. If you want to watch that video, you can click here. I also talk about how to discard of sentimental items gracefully. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye.